Um, we have Adrian Mullane who's going to come and tell us a story about his family. Thank you. My family raised me with a great love of our Irish heritage, keeping Irish music and traditions and above all, our folk heroes alive. Legends of Irish rebels and heroes were routinely delivered across the family dinner table. A family of 12, yes, no TV, and many stories were very theatrically told by my father. And one of these was the Eureka Stockade story, which I heard from the youngest time. And he always included the remark that our family is related to Peter Lawler through Francis William Joseph Breen Hanlon, who I'm hoping is on the screen. Stories of the Eureka Stockade stimulated my young mind hugely. Peter Lawler and his fellows of Eureka exemplified the ideal that it is one's duty to rebel against injustice. If a law is unjust, rebellion is justified. They were rebels, but not disloyal, with their loyalty to the people, not to an unjust authority. So I grew up with a strong sense of relationship to the Eureka story, and Peter Lawler stood tall as a hero of the legend, and as my family felt, a hero among us as a relative. I well recall the late nights sitting with my old auntie Dot, Dorothy Mullane, in the same old house where her parents had lived for many, many years before. I think they had that house somewhere up to 60 or 70 years, a long time, which probably explains the survival of um, our memorabilia all in one place in boxes. Late at night, looking through old photos, discussing various histories she recalled, going through a massive amount of what can be best called the sedimentation of numerous lifetimes. Utter junk mixed in with family relics and treasured memorabilia, some of it going back to Ireland. One inconspicuous relic was an old Eureka souvenir postcard from around 1910, to which had been pinned a tiny scrap of blue rag and on the back of which Dorothy had scrawled in her later years, in crude and quite large and poor handwriting, reflecting her age, piece of Eureka flag. It was an effort to ensure it might not be simply discarded as rubbish, to give it some standing and significance. On these long late nights, she passed on histories verbally. She told me that some time after Eureka, Peter Lawler gave his relative Hanlon this piece of the great flag that meant so much to him, Hanlon being my great-grandfather. Hanlon was a very close friend to Lawler. The closest friend he had in this world were the words she used and that were bandied about. They were very close. Uh, they lived at one time in Richmond, near to St Ignatius Church, where both Hanlon and Lawler were leading men of the parish in later years after you Reference is made in Lawler's obituary in the Argus to Francis Hanlon as his cousin. Uh, as an aside, um, Lawler's wife was the daughter of a Hanlon. There were a lot of enclaves in Ireland that the Irish kept each other very close. Hanlon died about two years after Lawler at his beautiful old house, which remains as a listed heritage building now owned by the church at number three Elm Grove, Richmond. And the flag remnant, after some years, ended up in the safekeeping of firstly Gertrude, um, Hanlon's daughter, my grandmother, and then passed on to Gertrude's daughter, Dorothy, who about a year before she died, personally gave me this flag remnant as a safeguard against possible loss if it was just to be amongst shackles after her passing. To pay tribute to my nana, Gert, and especially to my auntie, Dot, whose dedication and respect for the history and recognition of the significance of the piece of flag has ensured it was kept and survives to this time. This was uh, kept for a very long time. This little piece of blue rag is not... Uh, insignificant in my family. It's wonderful to have this uh, corroboration. It was kept basically on the principle of trusting your elders' story, oral history. Uh, we had no proof beyond our family legend. I had at times made desultory contact with one or more museum and other places. So it was uh, only when uh, I made contact through MAID that I got a full-blooded response which helped me to explore the provenance of the fragment. I thank MAID for responding to my approach and arranging a forensic examination of the flag remnant. It's a huge contribution to my family. We've got scientific support and our story is now validated. My family represents just a small human connection through the two cousins and, of course, we feel to be a tiny part of the greater story, just as this fragment is a small part of the greater flag. In the same way, we're all connected to the Eureka story. It's a reminder of the role 
the so-called common person may have, indeed is needed to have, in the preservation of democracy, and to use a great piece of vernacular, keeping the bastards honest. Thanks, Adrian. I'd now like to ask uh, David Battersby and Gary Taylor to come and do the unveiling. So we'll be able to tell you shortly that the flag will be in its new home and then you can go and have a look at it hopefully before you go. So thank you very much.